at this point, everything Cardi B releases should be considered for her album and should be evaluated as such. It's March 15th, 2024. Cardi B has dropped her new single, Enough Miami, and we're going to evaluate it and break it down and understand, is this good enough for an album single? The song clocks in at 2 minutes and 39 seconds. On the first listen, I really couldn't understand any cohesion in the message. And then I looked at the writers. So let's take a look at that here from Tidal. And we scroll all the way down to right here. We see Bel Caliz Almanzar, which is Cardi. And then you have the producers who are up here, DJ Swinkle, OG Parker, and Romano. And then their names are also listed here. OG Parker is Joshua Parker, James D. Steed. Let's click on him. He worked on bongos up and like what freestyle and in the writer capacity. So he's clearly someone else that has been writing for Cardi. Now let's go back. Terrence Williams, who's this? Um, I don't really know. They've been, they're credited as an artist, but I've never heard of this person before. But who do we not see? We do not see Partisan Fontaine. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. The message of this song seems to be about Cardi just talking her stuff, just being the best, being that girl. She puts an emphasis on fashion in her lyrics on this song because it seems like she feels like that's the one thing that she has over her competitors, even though she says she doesn't see any competitors in the song. I think that the beat is very repetitive. Now, speaking of the production, um, I showed you who the producers are, but let's talk about the similarities between... Um, this song and Bia's song, Fall Back, that the pair comparisons were coming last week. Here is the opening of Cardi's song. This was the snippet she put behind her last music video, The Like What Freestyle. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so dun, dun, dun. Dun. So you get that beat pattern, right? So let's go to be a song fall back now. Sorry. Uh, okay. So they're doing the same thing. Dun. Dun, dun. Not everything is super the same, but you can hear that pattern. And then Cardi also does ah, uh, okay, okay, which we also be a do this a year prior when she released this project that came out in 2023. So um, I've seen Bia's credits before, and Bia has worked with some of the same producers that um, Cardi is working with. Let's go to, um, okay, I was going to show you guys Bia's um, producer credits, but I don't think that they are working with the same people. Um, you know, so I was going to attribute like the copying or the similarities with the same producer, because I remember that like one of the producers who made like a whole lot of money um, with Bia also produced on this song. So they obviously have similarities, but that is not the case here. So I just wanted to revisit that. So I want to know in the comments, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this was an indeed copy off of Bia or was this more of a producer's fault? Now, this is not the first accusation that Cardi has had when it comes to copying Bia. The previous Like What Freestyle also sampled um that B-I-T-C-H song by Missy Elliott, which Bia also sampled. But enough of that, on to the next subject. Let's talk about the music video real quick. This is where I feel like we need to stop lying to Cardi or y'all need to stop lying to Cardi. The visuals did not eat, but there are some cool effects. I feel like the aesthetic that Cardi, Cardi is using right now is tired and it's tired because I don't like it. It's tired because it feels like when people are intentionally trying to look ugly, but to look high fashion and editorial, but it doesn't come off good. You know, I think JT does a really good job with that. And I spoke about that in my previous videos, but yeah, I really don't like it. I think in the, um, the, the, Atlantic obviously cut the budget. There is no, there's not a lot of budget um, behind these visuals. And honestly, these songs really don't, don't deserve a, a lot of budget for visuals, but I'm gonna get to that later. Um, Cardi's enunciation has regressed, in my opinion. As someone who listened to Cardi's early music before her first album, I didn't really notice like so much of how she cannot speak English. But these days, as more and more people um, pointed out, it becomes more and more apparent. And you've been rapping now for what, six, seven years? I don't know. So it feels like you should be improving, but it seems like you're regressing because now I notice it more than ever. 
but is this lead single material y'all the song enough miami so she put out the like what freestyle um she like let's talk about the album so i said in the beginning of the video everything that cardi is releasing now outside of features because she was also featured on flo millie's project that just dropped today so i'm also listening to that do you guys want a video on flo millie's um project let me know just type fm in the comments for flo millie but um, so on Cardi's project, right, everything that she's releasing right now could be on her next album, um, including the Like What Freestyle as well as this song. To me, these don't really give great lead single material. She could possibly place up and WAP on the album. I know that both of those songs are pretty old, but I'm sure that they'll find a way to do it. Um, I guess this song, um, Enough Miami, is a cool second choice single for the album. I just feel like the message is not strong enough to be held with any regard along with the production. So for example, let's talk about Super Freaky Girl real quick by Nicki Minaj. The, the message of the song is not anything spectacular, but the beat and everything that goes into the song, it's giving hit, right? It's giving a natural hit, which it was. It went number one. It had a lot of um, just attention on it internationally, on TikTok, virality, internet, X, Y, and Z. But I don't see the same happening with this song because I just don't feel like it's a great enough song to command that type of attention. So, and if anybody heard it, definitely let me know because it this is going to speak to the strength of the music that is coming on this um on this next album. So once again, I feel like we need to stop lying to Cardi. Stop telling her these visuals eat. I'm seeing it a lot in the comments on different blogs, especially Rap Alert and just any and everywhere because they don't because I think that. Right now, Cardi's brand in music has become, oh, if anything else, the visuals are going to eat. The music might not be great. The bars might not be there, but the visuals are going to eat. And it's like, they're not going to eat for every song. Like, can we be honest and evaluate the visuals one by one inst instead of just putting a blanket statement, her visuals eat? Do they still eat? Now that the budget has been cut, are the visuals still eating? To me, no. And that is like absolutely no hate. It's just not it. And I would have said the same thing about um, Nicki Minaj's Red Ruby the Sleeves. It was a low budget visual, but at least that there were still backgrounds. It was still scenery, X, Y, and Z. Cardi B is shooting these videos behind a white wall and putting effects on there. So no, the visuals are not eating. The effects might be cool for your eyeballs, you know, for something to captivate your eyes for one quick second. But no, overall, I'm going to rate this song a two. I definitely want to know what you guys think. Um... I want to know, though, why do y'all feel like Party is not credited on the song? Obviously, he didn't work on it because if he did, he would be credited. But do you think that their working and writing relationship has come to an end? That is what I want to know. I want to see if he's going to be featured on this next album um, because of all of the things that have happened between Party and Meg had their relationship ended a while ago. Because one thing about Cardi, as she told you guys in the previous Freestyle Like What Freestyle, the thing was recorded in the beginning of 2023. So one thing about Cardi is that she will hold music for five years and put it out just like she re like she recorded it yesterday so it's like if anything her relation her writing relationship with party could have ended a while ago we will honestly never know unless either of them speak on it but it's just interesting that he is not credited on this song so what do you guys think about it okay um yeah so um do, but my other question is do y'all think that this song is good quality for a lead single it's obviously not the first lead single but the second lead single remember Nicki Minaj had um Super Freaky Girl, then Red Ruby the Sleeves, then Last Time I Saw You. And I feel like the difference between her and Nikki, obviously, there's a big difference between them. But with Nikki's singles, the meaning got more and more, like, of importance, right? SFG was a surface level meeting about SEX, right? Then you had Red Ruby the Sleeves, which was about asserting her dominance in the female rap market or in the rap market in general, talking about how she's the queen, X, Y, and Z. Then you had Last Time I Saw You, which was a more vulnerable song, a deep cut that she wanted people to pay attention to, both for like just emotional purposes, being vulnerable, but also providing a level of, um, what's it called? Diversity and adaptability, right? So, um, that's what I think was special about Nikki's lead singles to her album. So I want to know, do you guys think that this is a quality song for her lead single? All in all, stop lying to Cardi B. Stop only talking about her visuals. Evaluate everything for what they, you know, bring to the table. And this is just giving a two out of five at most. But thank you guys so much for um, listening. I'm looking forward to your comments. and I will see you in the next video.